democracy of the system. We're told that you, you made that child, so you're going to pay child support no matter, no matter what. If you go to court, it's important enough you're going to pay child support. But you know what? It's not important enough that you had something to do with that child that you're going to have a part of the decision of whether that child goes to So child. you think, so, and I agree with you, that we're telling men that they have to have responsibilities in raising their children, but we give them no say in the decision about if and under what circumstances a child is born. Are you saying you think a man should have the right to prohibit a woman from having an abortion? That's what you're saying. Yeah. Correct. I mean, that's exactly and that's clearly saying. not the law, but that's your personal view, that a, man, that she, that a woman should have... Uh, permission of her partner or he should be able to veto the abortion or, or at least the child should be represented and that's another issue that that you know the pro-life and pro-choice movements don't want to talk about but look if, if I, I just represented recently in court a two-week-old baby because the, the parent had been a cocaine addict and the child was born with great deformity um, two weeks prior to that birth of that child that child had no re legal representation had no right to exist and could have been aborted without any representation in court two weeks later what changed Okay. The, 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 let me just get, the reason that I think that the flip side of this, that is a man's right to say no, is important, because I'll tell you what I see in, in my counseling practice. Uh, I see couples coming to me, men and women who have married and are raising their children, and then one day there's a knock at the door and a subpoena, essentially, for a, a, a woman says to this man who's now happily married, uh, you, you and I had a relationship 15, 16 years ago, and now you owe me 15, 16 years worth of retroactive child support. She can legally, in many states, take his life savings, savings that this couple has put away for their college, for their kids' college education, and the law will be on the side of the woman who never even told the man that he was a father, and now she's got to give him $100,000. That happens. That's tragic. Would you not well, say? But that's not the law in New York State. In New York State, you, you, you're retroactive to the date of the filing of a petition. So if she fi tried to find him and filed a petition on a given date, it'll be retroactive. In some to that states, date. she can go back indefinitely. In some states, and you, you can't go back. Is that bizarre? So that's one of those things that New York does well. One of the few things that New York one does well. One of the well. few things. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you, put a hypothetical to you um, and, and, and ask the lawyers particularly. A, a young man comes to me uh, and he says, my, we're li I'm living with my girlfriend. She's six months pregnant. And um, I, I'm, the young man is distraught. Uh, he said, I, I desperately do not want to be a father. I've told the woman, but she adamantly refuses. She will not have an abortion. What, what will I do? Now, what would you say if I gave him this advice? I'm not saying I have or that I would, but I'd like a lawyer's opinion about the following advice. I would say to him, hypothetically, do nothing now. Wait until the child is born. And then avail yourself of the statute in New York, which allows a parent who cannot care for their newborn infant to anonymously leave the child at a hospital, police station, or fire station, provided the child is no more than five days old. Now, the law is not written in gender terms. It's gender neutral. It says a parent can drop off the child. If I advise this young man to take the child, to drop it off at a hospital emergency room because he doesn't feel capable of caring for it, would I be giving him sound advice? Lawyers? Not sound legal advice, no. I've quoted the law, I Sal. I understand that, but that's not sound legal advice. Well, why because not? It's the law, that, Sal. Well, first of all, you, which, the, the situation you brought up was a non-married situation. In parents, New York State, parents. In, in New York State, the the woman is going to be deemed to be in a non-married situation the custodial parent. So now he's considered custodial interference. He's going to leave this child somewhere else against her will. And yes, he's going to be liable. Law, for law, that law doesn't say anything about custody. Let me change the hypothetical. They're married. And the husband, young husband says, I can't deal with this now. If, if she keeps this baby, I will snap. I may hurt someone. I may hurt her. I may hurt the baby. Sal, the statute is gender neutral. It specifically gives a parent but a right you, to drop the child off. And, and he has the right to drop the child off. However, he's going to be in, he has another person to think about here, and that's the mother. Well, Sal, she doesn't have any legal responsibility. The key word in the statute is anonymously. Well, you she can't, can, but she you can't read that statute in a, in, a, in a vacuum. You've got to read that statute in context of all of the other laws. Right. So she drops the child off anonymously, and the next day the distraught boyfriend or husband shows up and says, Wait a second. I wanted to be a father to this child. Does he have a case here? Has, can the woman be prosecuted? The law specifically prevents her prosecution. And there you made your point, because there is the inequality in the law. Did I make a point about a sexist dis a discrimination? Is that my point? You did very well. That was a good point. Thank you. <laughs> and my, I think the larger point is that, is that I think my own personal view is that the society is very much determined to give women reproductive choice in all situations. 
and not men. That's a double standard that I feel as a man, that I have absolutely no say under any situation. I, I, I mean, I disagree with that, Mel. I mean, you um, can be a responsible person who, when you know, I mean, every boy or man knows that when he has sex, that he can, it can possibly uh, be procreative, and you just take responsibility for that and take precaution and grow up and realize that when you have sex that you can bear have a child that way i mean everybody knows that and take responsibility for what you do i think i do think there's other issues going on here i mean we have two people who think that um that if you make love with another individual and you procreate that you should get married i i respect that that view uh that's one view there's another view of whether or not uh you know a, a child uh is it should be considered a child when they're in utero as opposed to when they're just born but i do come back to the major issue that men and women should both take responsibility and use contraceptives and if if you don't and realize that that uh that someone can get pregnant. Okay. I also, lastly, uh, one uh, person that has been ignored in this context is the child. Uh, if the child is going to be born, that you're, you're punishing that child when the man or woman does not take financial responsibility. Why should that child, who was a re product of um, non-contraceptive uh, intercourse, uh, be punished and not have financial uh, well, resources well, we've addressed that helping the that well, well, well. I mean, well, we, we've well, over-addressed I don't agree with the way the laws have addressed well, that. I think, I, 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 think, I think the society has, there are some two million couples and individuals in our society desperate to take care of children. I don't think a child would suffer. I think, respectfully, your point of view made a lot of sense. And to me, as a young man growing up, that's how I saw sexuality. If I was responsible for creating life, it was my responsibility. It made sense before Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade gave women choice and allowed them to separate sexual intimacy from procreation. It is a profound privilege and that no man in our society has. I would ask you to think about that. I don't think it's a privilege that women have. I, I think you're in a whole different zone. I, well, you, you mentioned about, you mentioned about, well, that's been said before. You mentioned, <laughs> you, you mentioned about, about uh, the life of the baby in utero. So let me, let me create another, uh, uh, one last hypothetical for you to consider about the, whether there is a life in utero. Uh, let's say a man and woman have, have a sexual relationship and um, uh, pregnancy results. Okay, and uh, she discusses the pregnancy with her boyfriend and with her parents and with her friends and clergy and ultimately she decides that the best thing to do is to have an abortion, okay? So she makes an appointment at the abortion clinic in the community, but uh, it's not a good day for her to go down because the day she goes down to have the abortion there are protesters at the clinic. These are pro-life people who believe that abortion is murder. And their mission that day is to try to persuade some women to not enter the clinic, to not have abortions. Now, unfortunately for the woman in my hypothetical, one of the protesters becomes too exuberant. And he tries to block her entrance. And she's determined to get in. She tries to push him aside. He pushes back, and she falls on the pavement. And when she falls, she suffers a miscarriage. Prosecutor gets wind of this and charges him, the protester, with a fetal homicide, completely consistent with the law. He caused the death of the baby in utero. Is the prosecutor right, and will he prevail in accusing this man of a fetal homicide? There's silence. That's not good. We need an answer. <laughs> well, if you're talking about the Unborn Victims uh, of Violence Act, I disagree with that act, and I don't think the fetus should be considered uh, a person uh, to charge homicide in order there, for there to be a homicide. But it's the law now, and, and it's a federal law, that in fact, um, if you cause the death of a life in utero, that it is in fact a homicide. Is that a correct interpretation of the law? Well, would the prosecutor prevail in saying that this per protester caused the death of a baby would be guilty of a homicide? Yeah, and it is exactly one of the hypocrisies of the law. Yeah. It, 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 not necessarily of that law, but maybe of the abortion argument altogether. Because at that point, it's similar to the case, the Lacey Peterson case out in California. Um, you know, she died with a baby inside her, and the baby died, and, and now do we have a double homicide? And they're charging that out there. The very same prosecutors that probably 
would take a pro 